Building a Stuart 504 boiler plant, part 3. Mounting the hand pump and finding the best position for the individual parts. The first part of the job though is to mount the hand pump. I'm going to cut this block and mount this hand pump on the block itself. And to do this I'm using my horizontal metal cutting bandsaw. This hand pump has a ram which is half an inch in diameter, which means it will move more water, but the problem is this kind of hand pump is designed to be immersed in water in the back of a tender or fitted in the side tank of a model steam locomotive. And to make it work in my application I have to mount it on a block and use a right angle steam fitting in order to pipe it up. The steam fitting that I'm using for this is a clack valve or check valve and I'm about to test it and see if it works. To test the pump I've put a piece of pipe down into a water bottle and as you can see in this clip the pump works perfectly. Pumps of this type ideally need to be self priming and this one is so everything's ok and it pumps a good amount of water at every stroke. Now I need to mount this pump on the metal block that I've just cut on the bandsaw but the brass plug that screws into the end of the clack valve is a bit too big so I need to take this out, put it in the lathe, machine a little bit off and refit it and I'll be able to mount the pump on the metal block perfectly. And you can see this clearly in this clip I just shortened the end of the brass cap and the pump now sits on the metal block and everything's ok. The next part of the job is to drill a couple of holes in the block, countersink them and use some wood screws to screw the block down onto the baseboard. I also need to drill and tap four holes around the edge of this block to fix the pump to the block itself after it's been finally fitted to the baseboard. With the metal block securely clamped in the vise on the drilling machine, I'm first of all using a centre drill to make pilot holes on the marks that are scribed on the block. And then I use a 3 16th of an inch diameter twist drill to drill all the way through the holes. And this will allow me to use some substantial wood screws to fasten the block to the wooden baseboard. This part shows me using a countersink and I really could do with a new one because this is very blunt but it does the job and I'm deeply countersinking the holes to take the heads of the countersink wood screws. The next part is to mark out the block around the edge to take the pump. Here are the four holes marked out ready for drilling and now it's over to the drilling machine to drill them first of all with a centre drill followed by a tapping size drill for 6BA which in this case is a number 42 drill. In these videos I never include loads of formulas and numerical data. There's loads of this on the internet. If you want to know about tapping sizes for BA threads then type into Google tapping sizes for BA threads and you'll be surprised how much information there is out there. On screen at the moment I'm showing the tapping of the holes. Now a 6BA tap is very small and they will break off very easily and you don't want that to happen. So it's a good idea to use some lubricant. On the right hand side of the picture is a little pool of lubricant. You could use a tapping compound, I do have some of that, but it's just quicker and easier to use my general purpose lubricating oil, which is a mixture of steam oil, machine oil and rapeseed oil. And while on the subject of my lubrication mixture that I make up, an expert viewer told me that my rapeseed oil is no good at all because it doesn't contain something that used to be in rapeseed oil but in recent years has been removed. I think he said it was some sort of acid. All I can say about this is the man who told me about rapeseed oil was a professional scientist at an oil refinery that I worked at and when I initially experimented with adding rapeseed oil to my oil mixture I did notice that the lubrication properties of the oil seemed to improve when I added the rapeseed oil. But what do I know, I'm just a simple musician from the north of England. After tapping all of the holes in the block it's time to fit some studs and I'm making these out of some long brass bolts. I screw the brass bolts all the way in and then just chop them off to the right length and clean up the end of the threads. Pretty much like this. To chop off the bolts I move the part to the left hand side away from the camera because when you use side cutters like this the cut part of the bolt flies off with quite a lot of force. In this clip you see the finished job. The nuts are obviously not in place but the pump fits quite nicely onto the studs. I have a kit of parts. Before I go any further and before I make any more bits and pieces I need to figure out the best place to put everything on the baseboard. As you can see I have a plywood baseboard and I'll be veneering this with some mahogany strip before I finish the job. I'm going to use the condenser that preheats the water. When I built this condenser I didn't have any boiler plant in mind for it and it was only when I bought this 504 boiler 
and renovated it, I realised that the condenser and the 504 boiler looked pretty good close together. The only problem was, the layout of the condenser was the wrong way round for the 504 boiler. To put it in position, I needed the end of the condenser with the water preheater inlet and outlet to be at the end of the boiler where the clack valve was. So I had to rejig the condenser to change everything round. Originally, the steam inlet was the top hole that you can see on screen. I need it to be in the middle hole. So I need to make a fitting, and it starts like this with a commercial fitting, then I silver solder a pipe onto it. This then fits in the middle, and the pipe has to be at the top. And to do this, I used some copper shim washers, which made sure that the pipe was at the top of the condenser. If you look at the centre fitting, you'll see a mark that I made with the felt tip pen. And with the felt tip pen mark at the top, the internal pipe is then in the correct position. And now I can pipe up the condenser once again from the centre union, but this time it's at the other end of the condenser. In this clip, you can see that the preheater, water inlet and outlet are now at the right end of the boiler, next to the clack valve. By way of an experiment, I'm going to fit an injector to this plant. Normally, I would only fit injectors to model steam locomotives, because when you run them, lots of water gushes out of the bottom before you make the fine adjustment, and the injector starts to pump the water into the boiler. In a stationary installation, you have a bit of a problem, because you need to drain this water away. The tank also needs to be elevated, because injectors are not self-priming. So now I'm not going to use a chocolate tin, I'm using this to illustrate the principle. The tank needs to be elevated, and it needs to sit in another tank to catch the water. These are the connections, the steam inlet, the steam outlet, and you can't see from my thumb, but underneath, next to the water inlet, is the water outlet. For injectors to work, they need to be kept cool, so having the injector mounted next to the water tank is a good idea. I'll be using one of these valves as the water inlet valve for the injector. This is all quite experimental, and I think I'm going to put the tank here, in about this position. It'll be level with the top of the boiler, on a nice pedestal, inside a second tank. I've drawn the position of the second tank on the piece of plywood using a compass. Time now for a bit of technical drawing. I'm going to make one of these. This is a steam turret and it will have the valves on it for the engine, and the injector, and also the whistle. But that's in another episode. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful.